So I'm just an idiotic, stupid dog, but I definitely have a problem with this big A, uh, A Joker Ford or whatever his name is, Big J Oker Ford, Okerson, Big J Oker Ford. You're like, hey, buddy, you know, you're such an adroit comic. You're so, such a riffer. You can throw anything out and this guy's going to be able to riff on it. And, and, you know, he's just got that thing where he's so spontaneous. He can babble on, uh, you know, and just squeeze every drop out of every little situation. Drops nobody else knew were there, you know. It's even cool when he asks when Big J Okerson, he'll ask uh, part of his thing. He'll say, uh, it's cool. And he says, do you work in the field you studied in college? Oh, hilarious. That's gut splitting. Do you do what you were going to college for? Oh, it sounds cool when Jay says it, though. Believe me. He is an adroit conversationalist. He's almost of like a Diane Sawyer or Barbara Walters pewter natural ilk. He's got that pewter natural sense of timing and pace. He's my hero, that big J. The problem I have is that, you know, Big J, he said some crap about Kentucky. He had this guy that was uh, an Indian model, and he says, you look like an Indian model. And then Big J says, eh, I don't know if that's a compliment. It's kind of like saying, eh, she's a Kentucky 10. You know what I'm saying? A Kentucky 10, you know? You got all your teeth, Big J, I says. You know, Big J, that's the low-hanging fruit situation. You know, that's the one thing that, you know, you don't want to be a purveyor of the obvious of the rudimentary, you know, like the third grade level kind of, you want to be, you don't want to be a purveyor, whatever you call it, where you're just down there among the low hanging fruit. It's too obvious. It's too stupid. But since you cracked that joke, remember, I'm an idiotic, stupid dog who lives in a beautiful elitist neighborhood in Western Kentucky. I've been all through, spent a lot of time in Southeast Kentucky, you know. I had a little stint up there in Pennsylvania, New York area, but I'm a Kentucky dog. So when you crack wise in the Kentucky the situation like that, Big J, it almost makes me kind of, you know, want to rip you a new one. It almost makes me want to find the fault with you, even though I think you're a superstar comic and every, you know, you're, you're it, you're the man. And well deserved to be so. But when I seen you from that profile, son, you can't hide in that black moo moo you're wearing. You know, Johnny Cash, you know, you've got the Johnny Cash slimming method of, you know, wear black. It ain't working. You can drape yourself in a pirate, you know, raider black or a pirate, pirate flag. And you can don a pair of 10 speed bicycle gloves. But it ain't helping. That belly still looks like a sack of drowned kittens. It's very lumpy. It's off-putting. Just put it to you that way. Listen, Jay. When I when I watch you wearing them bike gloves, one uh, one hand wrapped around an energy drink and the other around the microphone, I can see that clubbing on your fingertips because you got a lack of what do you would say oxygen in your blood because you're too much of a lard ass. All right, Big J, you are the you know, you know, there's this, the comics comic, you know what I'm saying? This guy was the comics comic. You're like the Bart Giamatti's comic. You got them clubbing fingers. And I think that Big J, that's a good nickname for you. You're like a Bart Giamatti lookalike. Hey, Big J, I didn't think it was going to be that good. It's hard to rip your new ass, but it was the best I could do. What are you going to say?